This is a milk crate. This is a doormat. This is a low maintenance nesting box. Little girl back there just laid an egg in the barn. That's her favorite spot. And she's coming up to the coop. And we're going out to the coop because I want to talk about chickens today. Keeping chickens in the winter and how our chickens are doing. You coming? Four eggs all together. We have a flock of 18 chickens. We got two roosters, 16 hens, and they stay in this coop all year long. We live in Michigan and you can see it's cold out. There's snow on the ground and it's cold. It gets very cold, but we keep our coop just like this all winter long without any problems. This is called a fresh air coop or an open air coop. And I think it's one of the best coop concepts there is out there. There's a lot of varieties of it, but ventilation is key. A lot of people, think that when you have chickens, you have to keep them warm during the winter and they close up their coops and they seal up the holes and they try to keep it warm. They even insulate it sometimes. And that is a major mistake when keeping chickens because the coop isn't meant to keep the chickens warm. The coop should be designed to let the chickens keep themselves warm. And what I mean is keeping them dry and out of the wind. That's all they need. If they're dry, out of the wind, they'll stay warm. They can fluff up their feathers. They can, if, you're eat, if they're feeding them a, a good diet where they have enough food to maintain body heat, then they'll be perfectly fine all winter long. It's actually dangerous to keep chickens in a sealed coop because it builds up dust and ammonia and all kinds of respiratory problems can be the result of that. So you really want a well-ventilated coop and we accomplished that by keeping the front open. Not only can a sealed up coop lead to respiratory problems and other illnesses, but it also traps moisture, which leads to condensation. And that condensation is actually a major cause of frostbite. So believe it or not, by sealing up your coop and trying to keep your chickens warm, you could actually be causing them to get the thing you're trying to avoid, frostbite. A dry coop greatly decreases the chance of frostbite in chickens. Now there are a couple tricks to making this system work properly. The first one I'm going to show you is you got to notice the size of my screen on the front of the coop. I use a quarter inch hardware cloth. So these little openings are only a quarter inch wide, maybe a little less. And that's important because believe it or not, screen can be a really effective wind barrier. This is actually going to keep a lot of weather out, snow and wind, because 
um, it, dis it disrupts the flow of air. It creates turbulence. The wider the opening, the more free air is going to flow in when the wind blows. So using a fine screen is super important on the s open side of your coupe. You can actually see this in your own home. If you've ever taken a screen out of a window, you'll actually notice how much more air flows in with just with the screen out of the way. You wouldn't think a screen would stop a lot of air movement, but it really does. But it still allows ventilation, free ventilation without a lot of air blasting. I also have an overhang that extends over the screen that helps keep the rain out. So if you have any of that kind of rain or snow that's coming at an angle, it's not likely to get in. The third point I want to make is that the coupe should have a little bit of depth. Ours is about six feet deep and that's about as short as I was I would want to go. I would like it even deeper if I could. And the roosting poles should be in the back away from the face. That way the chickens are far away from the front and can get out of any possible draftiness that could be coming in. And they have a cozy little spot in the back in the dark on the far side. If you do that together, you have the right size coupe, you keep the front open, you put them in the proper place, you don't want them up against the screen. They're gonna be happy, they're gonna be warm, they're gonna be safe, and they're gonna live really well. The other benefit of an open air coupe is that it lets a lot of natural light in, so it helps the egg production and it helps the chickens get up and feel active and know it's daytime early in the day. And it's just all around a really good, healthy way to live. So don't be afraid of giving your chickens lots of ventilation during the winter because it's actually going to be better for them and it's going to help prevent frostbite and respiratory diseases. Another thing we like to do is use sawdust bedding. I just cleaned that out today. It stays really dry, really clean. And with this open air system, even if I'm late on cleaning it, no ammonia builds up, no smells, no odors, and the chickens can still sleep happily in there all night long. Number four, and probably the most important thing, is that the open side of your coop has to face the right direction. Where we live, most of our weather and wind comes from the north and the west, so our coop is facing south. That's really important. If you face your coop south, you're not going to get all that weather, and you're going to get all that sun. For us, the sun is, you know, coming from the south. So we get all that winter sun coming into the coop, and it blocks all the wind. So the right direction, the right screen, the right size, and there are some other tricks that I can share with you while I'm out here that we do to keep our chickens happy during the winter. One thing we like to do is keep this heated dog bowl out here. We find that a heated dog bowl is actually the perfect solution for watering chickens during the winter. We never have to worry about frozen water and it's really easy to clean and maintain. And the chickens can drink as much as they want, so it's perfect. This water is the best one we've found. It's a one and a half gallon water and it only uses 25 watts of power to keep the water thawed in all weather. It's been really awesome. Another thing we do is keep their feed outside of the coop. We want to encourage them to get outside as much as they can so we never put their feed in the coop. It just causes smells, mest, rot, and attracts mice. So we keep it outside and the birds have to come outside to eat. And to make it easier for them, we lay hay on the ground. A lot of people use straw during the winter, but we prefer hay because hay is full of green grass and seeds and weeds and everything else. And when we put hay on the ground, it really encourages them to forage during the winter. They, they scratch through the hay and they actually eat it. They eat the grass, they eat the seeds, they see what they can find in there, all kinds of little plants, and they eat it. When you put straw down, there's no, there's nothing they can eat. No nutrition, no grass, it's just a dead product. And believe it or not, it's a lot easier to find organic hay than organic straw. So, if that's important to you, you can put organic hay down and let them scratch through it, let them walk through it. You create paths like this, and the chickens will go anywhere the hay is. Encourage them to get out and do a little exercise. And another thing we did is add this perch so that they have a place to sit. Chickens like to hop up on things, and that gives them a place to go during the winter. They come outside, and get on their perch. Another thing that's often overlooked is the need to dust bathe. Chickens love to dust bathe and they do it to keep clean, to, to keep the lice away, to just maintain their feathers. And during the winter when the ground is frozen, they don't have any place to dust bathe and they can go all, picture going all winter without taking a bath. Not very pleasant. So make sure you have a a box, a bin, a place, a covered shelter where they can get under and they can get in there into some loose dust or ashes and just 
flop around and get it all in their feathers. They'll really love that. And what we have in place is underneath this coop. There's actually a gap there and the chickens can squeeze under there and it's all very fine soil. We have really loose, fine, sandy soil here so they really like to dust bathe in that. So that's where they do it, it's underneath our coop. And actually it's a little low for some of them so I would like to raise it up maybe another block or two, give them a little more room to get under there. And in the future, I would love to build a lean-to, like a, a, a run-in shed for the chickens to just go around and scratch during the winter without snow on the ground. And the last thing I wanna mention is that we can't overlook, no matter how much you put in place, no matter how many systems you try to use, the importance of breeds. Buy the right breed for your climate. You wouldn't buy a heavy, cold, hardy bird and put them in the south because they're going to die from the heat. And you wouldn't take a small, heat-tolerant bird and put him in the north because he's going to freeze. You know, you don't want a big comb if you're living way up north because that's going to get frostbite. So just pay attention to breed characteristics. Buy breeds that are good for your climate and you can give them housing. And they can stay outside all winter in any weather, in any degree of coldness and they'll be totally fine even in an open air coop like that. So before I go I'm sure you're interested in knowing about that nesting box I made. So here it is. I'm doing an experiment. I got two with my mat and I got one with hay in it still in case they don't want to use the mat. But in a previous flock we did use those same floor mats in our nesting box and the chickens loved it and we had no broken eggs, no mess, really easy to clean. The one thing about using hay in your nesting boxes is the chickens like to scratch it out and eat it, so it disappears pretty quickly. These plastic doormats, they've worked good in, for us in the past because they're easy to clean if you need to clean them. They're really durable. The chickens can ingest them. It's just a really good, safe way so you don't have broken eggs in your coop. So we're gonna see how our new flock likes these mats. If they don't like them, we'll switch them out, but I think they'll work fine. So I'm no chicken expert, but I've built three coops. I've observed our flock. I've read a ton of online forums and books and articles and just tried to take as much information as I could to learn about chickens and I just wanted to share what I've learned with you guys what's working for us and that you can keep a flock in the winter and not worry about them getting too cold the chickens are really built to handle it just got to keep them dry keep them out of the wind keep them well fed and give them a safe place to live and they'll be happy so I hope this information helps somebody out there. I really enjoy sharing it with you, sharing our flock with you. So each year we get more better at keeping our chickens and we learn more and it's been a lot of fun having them. These white Chanticleers are, have been our favorite so far. They're just awesome chickens. And we're really of the mindset of not heating the coop. No heat lamps, no artificial heating. We don't even do artificial lighting. We like the coop to be, the chickens to be really natural. We really feel like this is one of the best systems that we've seen so far. So you're going under to get her dust bathing done. I really do feel like heating a coop does more harm than good and keeping a coop sealed up is dangerous for the birds.